Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and not necessarily talk to you about my character, although I am really enjoying the Reign of Arrows character. We'll make a separate video for it. Um, but more so, a lot of people have been asking me how I'm farming my Fracture items in SSF. So for people who hey. don't know, Fracture items are kind of like these things that you find where they have like that little golden whatever color you want to call it. Um, basically, no matter what you do to that item, um, that stat will always stay. So fractured items are a very good base for crafting. Um, and in SSF, it can kind of be really tricky to find specific bases with specific fractures. Truly, there is no guaranteed way to really just acquire them. However, there are things you can always do to increase your odds. So after showing you guys some of the fractures that I've found, I want to go ahead and kind of talk to you guys about the strategy that I'm doing because it seems to be working out very, very well. And it requires basically no currency outside of a few void stones. So I'm currently doing this on Mesa and Dunes. You don't have to pick Mesa Dunes. You could truly pick any combo you want. Um, Mesa Dunes I'm running because both of them happen to drop the Fortunate card. Um, fortunate card is an extra way for me to get some Divines and SSF that I can use for some crafting. So with that being said, I'm going to just walk you guys through it. So uh, this is an Alk and Go strat. So you quite literally Alk your map and you go. If you are in Trade League or, <clears throat> or if you want to add more investment, you can always think about adding, like, for example, Divination Card Scarabs. You can add the Abyss Scarab because we're doing Abyss. You could use Delhi Orbs if you don't want to do the Delhi setup that I'm doing right now. Um, you can always add Fragments for Quantity. So there's a lot of different things you can be doing. So right at the beginning of the map, uh, either Delhi will spawn or not. It's like, I don't know, 70% chance or so to spawn it. Uh, I'm using Unending Nightmare, so I don't have to worry about the timer. If you want more currency, don't use this because you can sell Delhi Orbs, but... In SSF, I'm really just aiming for my fractured items. Now, the purpose of uh, fractured items here is that... Not, not the purpose, but how to get them. So, essentially, the way you get your fractured items... Let me switch to the display capture here. Is what's called Arc Nemesis Loot Conversion. So, a little while ago, if you guys remember, there was this league we played called Arc Nemesis. Where the mobs dropped kind of crazy stuff and uh, it was a little, little too extreme. Oh, anyway, after they changed how that stuff worked, they kept parts of Arc Nemesis in the game, uh, and one of the parts that was kept is the loot conversion. Basically, when rare monsters uh, spawn, right, or when you look in or encounter a rare monster, um, like this guy right here, he will have, like, affixes on him. And one of the affixes, or basically the more affixes it has in it, the more likely it has to have, like, a rare... I don't want to say combo, but, like, a rare setup right so one of the things it can do is drop like you know a bunch of maps one of the other things is it drops like a whole bunch of six sockets or it converts the six sockets into jewelers you get the point right well <clears throat> when it comes to fractured items this is also the same exact thing so you want to spawn it on league mechanic mobs so the reason you want to spawn it on league mechanic mobs like say abyss is because mobs that come from a league mechanic are typically stronger than regular rares this means that they come with a quantity multiplier. So instead of the mob dropping 4 to 8 fractures, it'll drop like 8 to 16, right? Then say that mob is possessed by a ghost, that number goes up even more, right? Say you're running with delirium and the mob is a little bit delirious, you get the point, that's another big boost, right? So the goal of farming fractured items is basically dumping a whole bunch of rare monsters into a map and killing them over and over quickly and then kind of going into the next map, right? So some other good league mechanics are Harbinger, uh, but I don't think Harbinger works out very well with Wandering Path, which is the strat that we're doing. Um, some other good ones would be uh, Legion. Legion is also pretty good. My only problem with Legion is I get a little bored of it because you get so much like gumball currency and it's just a lot to manage, so I get a little, little tired of it. Abyss seems to actually work out really well. I mean, I know I'm not getting any fracture items right now, but you have to think the map takes you about three to four minutes to run, uh, and you're playing like, I don't know, let's say four to six hours a day, and you have very little downtime in between. You know, even if one every 10 maps drops your bunch of fractured, that's still pretty good, right? just gonna go clean this up here and then I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the Atlas strategy I know that this video didn't really showcase stuff right but again this is what's gonna happen in most of the time is you're not gonna find anything and then 
you're gonna find like a bunch right See if I can maybe zoom into another one and see if we get lucky here. If not, it's okay. I'm going to talk about the Atlas strategy anyway, so. Any delirium? Oh, here we go. Your tolerance of the intolerable is admirable. All right, I'll try to go a little faster on this one for YouTube. Let's see. Don't really care about the loot mainly looking for the abyss because the abyss is where we get most of them and that is thanks to wandering path Hello, Abyss, where are you? Another strat I think you can do, it's like within the same strategy, is um, clicking quantity on your altars as they pop up, and then saving the Abyss until last and doing it, but that's a bit tedious for me, and then I always forget, so I don't really do that. This is also a pretty good strat for XP. Um, I'm averaging usually between 40 and 50 mil per hour right now at 98. So this is definitely how I'm going to be leveling my character to 100 while I get fractured bases for my next set of builds. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I don't think we have an abyss in this one. Maybe it's just sitting right up here. Yeah, you know you want to abyss. Oh, I think we got unlucky. So let's talk about the Atlas because I think it's pretty important to understand exactly what we're doing here. So you'll notice that I got a dunes map out of this one and I believe I got a dunes map out of the other one. Now, the purpose of this strategy is utilizing wandering path. Now this is nothing new, right? You utilize a wandering path to make it so you get close to 100% uh, adjacent map drop or 100%. If I search here map drop, right? We currently have a 22% chance to duplicate maps along with a 100% chance for a monster in your map to drop an additional map. As long as you're clearing majority of the map, this procs every time. Now, when you're utilizing shadow shaping, it says maps cannot be favored. Sorry, maps found cannot be your favored maps. Maps in your maps, maps in your maps, have a 1% chance to have a special implicit modifier for each map you have favored it. <clears throat> so, since I am doing dunes and mesa, which is here, we then basically favorite everything adjacent to them. So, Valpyramid, Iceberg, Estuary, Plateau, Residence. And by doing that, we're forcing these to be the only two adjacent non-favorite. So that's known as like the ping pong strat between those two. Now within here, um, Wandering Path scales all the baby nodes, but not the big nodes. So naturally, we're going to be taking one of the two influences for pack size since I don't know if Wandering Path is worth it for me because I can't get Remnants of the Path or Pass or Conquered with uh, Destructive Play. So <clears throat> at this point, I decided to go into my League Mechanics. So I've got Delirium. So basically everything for a chance at Delirium, incre uh, including the uh, increased reward progress. Now, what I've noticed about Abyss, um, about this setup is that this here is actually crazy. So you have a 6% chance, but it's actually 18%. So 6, 12, 18, normally this would be nine. 
to spawn like a whole shit ton of monsters, right? Then you also have a chance for it to spawn additional rare monsters. And again, these rare monsters are the ones that have the Arc Nemesis loot conversion that actually is what procs the fractured items. So this is really what you want in here. And then at the top, you just have like really good for XP for all of the uh, bonus magic, right? So again, very good for experience and very good for uh, farming fractured items. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, remember, catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. So I've been having a lot of fun on here on this bow character. We did drop an omniscience, but I don't know if I'm going to end up using it on this character because I really like it. I just need to fix ailment immunity, recraft my quiver, and ideally switch my body armor to a Heeries. So we will see. There's still things to do. But anyway, I'm out. Thanks for watching. See you guys all tomorrow.